Well, howdy ho, folks. We are back here at the Myth Impressions channel where we make cool stuff and show you how we do it. Uh, we make the stuff under our three brand names, Nemesis Gear, Steampunk Doubt, and of course, Knox Hollow, which is where we're at today in the Knox Hollow wood shop making wands because those seem to be the most popular. Um, I do have a really cool video coming up on some more 3D printing as well, so stay tuned for that. Uh, that reminds me, if you want to go down and hit that subscribe button down there uh, and make sure you ring that bell and that way you'll get notified uh, whenever we post any new videos. Um, we are making a, a nice wand out of beach today. We're going to do a couple of wands. And after the last video on Bacote, I got to say... Um, the beach is nice. It's it's not a particularly exotic or interesting wood as far as green goes. It's nice. Um, it has you know a pretty pretty solid color, uh, pretty nice grain. Uh, it, it cuts really well. Um, it's just not super fancy. Uh, but as far as woods go, this is a workhorse. Um, I'm not sure why it's not more popular. Um, just in woodworking in general, because it's, you know, it's a, it's a pretty nice, it's a pretty nice wood. It's, it's, um, I don't know. I guess I, I guess it's probably just because it's not very, uh, pretty exotic grains or anything like that. Um, but I would put it on, on par with some, uh, maybe alder or it, it seems like it's a little bit more solid than more, more, um, dense than alder is. Um, but you know, uh, alder doesn't have a particularly fun or interesting grain or anything to it. It's just a good all round project wood. Um, but anyway, so let's get into this. Uh, I'm going to, going to do the, basically the, the general process for starting a wand is that first of all, I make it round. Um, then I turn the shaft down to about the right size, um, about the size of a Sharpie. Um, that is going to allow me to feed it up into the chuck. Um, and we'll do that in a couple of sections here, uh, which is what I'm doing. And then once we get as much fed into the chuck as we can, that eliminates most of our chatter and we can do the detail work on the handle. So we get the handle, uh, all marked out generally, uh, just as a guideline of kind of where I want to do, uh, my divisions on, um, the detail, uh, design work on the handle, and then we'll go into the shaping. So uh, I'm going to speed up some of the shaping for you here. And while we're watching the shaping here, I do want to remind you to, to take two seconds and slide down there and hit that little thumbs up button there. Um, that really helps out the channel, and uh, we certainly appreciate your support, though. Um, so like I said, this, this beech wood is uh, it's a really nice wood, uh, just as a, a good all-round, good general-purpose wood. It cuts nicely. Uh, it, it, it's dense enough that it does sand up and polish nicely. Um, so, you know, as far as wands go, I definitely want to keep this one around. I don't know if it's going to be super, super popular, um, because, you know, like I say, it's not a, a really brilliant, interesting color or anything. Um, but it's definitely, um, just a nice wood in general, uh, as a general workhorse wood. Um, and it makes some, makes for some nice wands. Then after we get our general shaping done, we move into, um, some sanding. We'll, I'll sand this up, uh, part way. Oh, uh, about, oh, uh, probably around a 320, uh, grit or so. And then we're going to put some, um, friction burns in here. So I'm going to go ahead and I've kind of decided where I want to put those friction burns. I also, I'm going to do some evanizing on this. So I'm putting a, putting a couple of little guidelines in there for the wire to ride. And as you can see, this, uh, friction burns quite light, quite nicely. Um, the, the burns are nice and clean on this. They've got a good color. Um, they, they were just, you know, again, like I said, uh, it's a nice wood, a uh, nice average looking wood and um, reacted really well to that. So we'll do a little bit of sanding and then we're going to move into the ebonizing solution after we get the um, the wand parted off here. And the ebonizing solution, uh, this is this is my first, I did it on a, a piece of test wood uh, and it did uh, have a pretty decent reaction. Of course, you never know exactly how it's going to look until you actually put it um, directly on the wand you're working on. Every piece of wood is a little bit different, uh, but it gives you a good idea. And it does react to the ebonizing solution, not really strongly like the walnut or some of the other woods do, uh, but it does get a nice reaction. Again, similar to cherry or alder or, you know, one of the kind of uh, mid-range woods. 
um, kind of a nice gray there, as you can see. Um, and, you know, it, uh, that's exactly what I like out of wood, something that's just really versatile, that it burns well, sands well, uh, ebonizes, so I can put some nice color changes and stuff in there. And yeah, we'll just, we'll continue polishing this now all the way up to as uh, high of a grit. I always try to go up to a 2000 grit if I can sometimes, um, once you get, depending on the wood, 500, 600 grit, 800 grit, um, and you start not really seeing a difference, just the, the density of the wood, uh, the, the feel of it doesn't really change after you hit a certain point. But I do try to polish these up as far as I can before I, I oil and wax the finish, so um, but yeah, this one, this one did nice, a good, good all round, good general wood to work with. And as you can see, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to pull this out now that I've got it all sanded up. It's, um, just about ready for the oil finish. I'm going to, I got to put a taper on the wand. Um, I'll do that off camera here. Uh, but you can see it's got, uh, some color change there. Uh, once I have the oil on it, you can see, um, that it does have a, a little, you know, does darken the wand up a little bit, a little bit. Um, but yeah, uh, overall a nice wand. We'll go into the um, studio and get some proper photos under the good, uh, some r the right lighting. And yeah, you can see the green is, it's a nice green. It's pretty even. Um, it's nothing exotic or special. It doesn't have, at least the pieces I had didn't have any particularly interesting swirls or, or anything like that. Um, but overall a really nice wood so uh why don't we just make another wand then that that sounds like fun and i'm just gonna skip ahead here um i if you want to see the the beginning of the process you can always rewind the video um it's the same for pretty most all the ones i do i, I pretty much do the same uh, i get a, everything generally into the round um and then feed as much into the chuck gels as i can and then i'll go in and start doing some some detail work on the handle I decided I, I wanted to go with um, a kind of an angular, um, a lot of um, flat-ish um, faces on this particular handle, uh, which really kind of took a while. Uh, most of the, the tools that I have are um, a little bit better for like rounded um, curve transitions, stuff like that. So I ended up using um, the skew and the parting tools and stuff to kind of really straighten out those lines. Um, and that was a little more time consuming than, than I thought, but, um, went pretty well. We'll go, we'll kind of go through this while you're watching this. I do want to uh, remind you too, that if you'd like to become a member supporter, um, you can support the channel for as little as dollar a month. Um, we're working on, once we get our membership built up, we've got, um, we have some perks already. We're going to be doing some live streams. Um, I'm going to open up the discord channel, uh, to, to people. We'll be doing um, live streams and stuff. Once I get, um, I, I'm working on getting an upgraded internet connection out here in the boonies. Um, so yeah, for as little as a dollar a month, you can support the channel as well and get access to those perks and uh, direct line if you have questions and stuff to me as well. So, um, anyways, so doing, um, doing the angular handle like this, it's, I don't do it terribly often. Um, but I, you know, it's just a neat change to do. Um, and I, I found that using that little detail gouge works pretty well in small areas. And then now I just have to go in and sand um, these faces. I'm using the wood block and trying to keep it um, perpendicular to the different faces to get them all nice and sanded up. So obviously, as usual, I always edit out a ton of the sanding. So we'll, um, we'll get that done. And then we'll go in and do some friction burns on this. Uh, again, friction burning on this wood, it works wonderfully. So we'll get those dividing lines um, all done up. And then we'll get this thing um, parted off. Um, the tenon here. We'll, we got to clean up those um, those lines there. We'll get it parted off the tenon, and then uh, we'll we'll do some more ebonizing on this as well. And parting off the tenon like this is always um, a little bit sketchy for me, as I always worry you, when you actually take the tenon off. That's when you get to see how much the wand, uh, the grain of the wand, is forced to warp or anything in it. Um, this one turned out really straight, but sometimes when you start cutting the wood off, um, the wood grains and stuff are under tension, and uh, when you don't have anything holding it straight, it can actually have a little bit of a bend to it as well. Um, but we'll do the ebonizing fluid on this, um, like we did on the other wand. Um, it does give a nice. Um, transition as far as just a design um you know for the color and stuff on it so we'll do that and always uh when i'm doing this i try to sand the up 
to around a 320 grit because the ebonizing solution raises the grain and you have to come back and sand that again. So I get it as high as I can. Um, that way, when I come back and do the sanding, I can take off as little of the surface as possible and still make it smooth. So uh, I think I'm going up to uh, I'm probably hitting it again with a 320 grit and then we'll take it up as, as high as we can go on that and get that all sanded up. And once that's done, I'll pull pull it out of the chuck here so you can uh, see what see what this looks up, up up close with at least as good as the phone camera can show in the wood shop. Um, this one does show a little bit more grain, uh, but as you can see, once I get the oil and stuff on it, it does bring out the color, uh, nice, um, you know, even even grain, even colored wand. And then the, in the um, photo studio, you can see how that actually turned out. Uh, again, really happy with this wood. I think this makes some some nice um, non. Uh, exotic, um, just general use wands. Um, they've got a good color, good finish. Uh, and overall, I'm pretty happy with these. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. I've got another special edition Beechwood uh, wand coming up. Uh, and then we still have Aspen and Ebony coming up soon. So make sure you check back soon for those new videos. And we'll hope to see you in the future. Thanks for your support.